her surgery good. And uh, they said everything, the surgeon came out and talked to us and said everything looked good. But uh, they had to wait for the report to come back to see if it, you know, they, they went around it and they think everything's well. So that's good. And uh, I think, pray for Donna. She's still having problems with her hips. But, but she's wore out to a frazzle. I've been trying to find out what a frazzle was. Uh, and I think, I think I have observed it because that's where she got to. So now I know what it is. <laughs> but anyway, she said, you know, our family was with us until today and all last week. And she's been doing lots of cooking and all of this stuff plus, plus the other things. But uh, pray for those who are in need. Uh, Psalms 133, I love this. It said, Behold, how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. Isn't there a good feeling in dwelling in unity? I thank God for the unity that we have in our church. And, and we have unity because we have love, love one for another. He said this unity is like the precious oil that was poured upon the head running down on the beard, the beard of Aaron running down on the edge of his garments. It's like the dew of Hermon descending upon the mountain of Zion. For there the Lord commanded the blessing, life forevermore. It, it, that's such a powerful. I, I, I quote uh, part of this verse uh, occasionally. In fact, uh, ever so often, I, I, love, I love just saying this and, and quoting this, even if I'm uh, at home. Sometimes I'll do it in my devotion. Sometimes I'll read it. But I, I like this, and I thank God for the love and the unity. Want to uh, give God praise for hearing and answering prayer for uh, Dorothy and for Benita and continue to pray for the Sperry family. You know, it's, it's more difficult and harder now on them than it was actually when they had all the family together and supporting one another. I told Dalton, I said, hey, it's going to be, uh, it's going to be very, very difficult when you get back home and everybody else goes to their place, and there you are all alone in that house. But I want you to know that God said he'd be with you, and he'll fill that void for you. And I've talked with him since. He said that first night was pretty pretty tough but but he said he knew that God was with him and this is going to make all the difference in the world some of you've been there I know Willie's been there and 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 Diane's been there and others perhaps maybe have been there but uh, we'll continue to pray for them uh, anyone else have a special need Okay, uh, Betty, you give me a report, too, about, uh, yes. So God touched. Wow. And how old again? In her 50s. Okay. Praise God. God, it doesn't matter what age you are. God can do miracles.
All right. Praise God for that report. Amen. Amen. Uh, uh, I, Brother James and I were just talking a while ago about sometimes on your dashboard, uh, it'll come up, uh, you know, uh, check something. In fact, I got one on my little pickup now, and that's not unusual. Uh, it's a uh, it's, uh, little sick anyway. But, but, but uh, the point is, is that uh, not always are they accurate. Sometimes it gives a false report. I have taken mine in before, and it would give a false report. So I, I just hope this one uh, uh, is false. That would be real good if it was. Sometimes you like it to turn out that way. Yes. Okay. 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 Okay, we'll pray for you, Brother Jerry. Right now, we're going to pray for you. Father in heaven, I love you. I thank you because you're a prayer answering God. Father, thank you for these good reports that we've got. Lord, I pray that you would uh, uh, just receive thanks and praise from your people for what you've done. We thank you for everything, more importantly for salvation. We know we're saved by the blood of Jesus Christ. Thank you for healing these bodies. God, be with Jerry tomorrow. God, when he goes to have this body checked out, that knee. And Lord, I pray that you would just give him a good report tomorrow. In the name of Jesus, I believe. I believe, I believe. And Father, if there's anyone listening in tonight on the you stream that needs a touch from you, oh, let your healing virtue flow out to where they are. If they are downhearted and discouraged, God, touch them. Touch their spirit, oh God. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. I pray for the meeting at Lady Lake this weekend. Oh, Father, would you be with them? And would you give them a dynamic meeting? Any of our people that can go, I know that they will be blessed mightily because God, Brother Small, He is anointed to share about the importance of prayer. Thank you, Lord. I pray for our nation. Our nation is in trouble. Oh, God, would you touch our nation? I pray for Israel tonight. God, this is your land. Lord, this is your people. I was reading just recently where you said, These are my chosen people people and I will bless them and I will protect them. Thank you for that oh God and I pray that you would do just that and we thank you for doing it Father. Now Lord touch the, touch the minister tonight. Touch our brother Baker as he comes to share the good news of the kingdom. God thank you for the word of God that is presented from this pulpit. God, I thank You for His dedication and His anointing. Continue to do it, O God, in His life. And let that anointing be upon Him. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. And, and Brother Jerry, would you just receive the offering tonight? Would you do that? Amen. The Lord bless you. And we're going to do that, and then we're going to give the service to Brother Baker. We want him to take his time, go as long as he wants to. We're missing several of our people tonight. Oh, Bertha's not doing well. She's doing much better, but she still needs our prayer. So would you pray for Bertha tonight as well? Amen. Thank you, Brother Jerry. Father, thank you for these gifts tonight. 
God, we just thank you that we have the privilege. We love to give to your kingdom ministry. Thank you for the gospel now that we are mandated to spread and to share. Help us in fulfilling this in Christ's name. Amen. Yeah, I'll just just give it to you, Betty. There, she'll count it up there. Uh, okay, haven't you been blessed by our brother Baker? Thank you, brother Baker. I appreciate you and and uh, uh, our family's traveling right now. They're going to be traveling into the night. He ran in. I was telling brother James right before the church service started. He came down, you know, we had the memorial service on Monday. He was planning on going back home. And uh, his vehicle jumped timing and come to find out they had to take his whole motor out of the car and tear it down and fix the timing gear. It was a little plastic deal on the inside, and it broke and 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 whatever it did, it also hit the oil pan over the over the overhead. What do you call that? Uh, that fits over over the top of the motor. These are little deals that goes up and down. Valve cover. You know, I knew what it was. It just wouldn't come to me. Have you ever been there? It's not a good feeling. But anyway, whatever it was, it sent something up through there and cracked that thing as well. It didn't do any damage other than, than that, and then they had to go in. But, but you don't get out of there cheap when they have to completely pull the whole motor on the outside, take it down, and do all of this. Anyway, pray for them. They are on their way home driving right now. Would you ask God to give them travel of mercy? Brother Baker, thank you, Brother Baker, for doing these Praise Wednesday the services. Praise the Lord. The Lord is good. The Lord is great. And it's always a privilege to come to His house. And we always find wonderful fellowship. We're so touched to the Lord when we come, but we're not the same when we leave. And it works for us every day. It's just not a Sunday religion. It's a salvation that will last every day throughout the day and the ensuing months. So we're privileged people. They're telling us to be aware of December 21. Those Mayan people years and years ago said something was going to happen. Uh, they tell us a whole lot when we look at um, this New Age movement. But they're incorrect. God knows the time for His Son and His only Son, not the 12th imam or whoever he is and they say he's down in a hole my lord is coming in the clouds and uh, if my friends that are passed on they'll just have what I imagine six foot to catch me and we'll go up to meet the lord in the air you know that kind of thing it's, re it's a time of rejoicing you know, they're talking about physical uh, cliff, and they're talking about this and that, and the arrogance of people. Um, I'm telling you, the Lord is still in control, and uh, it's it's hard for me to understand uh, what's happening today in this great land of ours, but God still knows. And God will send revival. There's still time for a great awakening. And that's what the prayers of Brother Small's uh, coordination is and in his group and throughout the church and churches. 
we're looking for Jesus to come. You just have to cut off the tube, take the um, uh, liberty to just uh, not look at it sometime and and pray and rethink this thing and refocus, realize that God is in control. Now, Sunday night, uh, I said that my remarks tonight would be centered on John chapter 5. You know that uh, story, uh, verses 1 through 17, before I even pick uh, verse 7 out of John 5. And I'm going to speak to you on know your spiritual rights. And if you don't finish tonight, the pastor wants me to next week, I'll just finish it up. But I want you to notice uh, that in uh, John's gospel, there are three remarkable acts of healing by Jesus. And this would be good uh, for me when I have the privilege to stand before you on a Wednesday night to take these remarkable acts of healing from John and, and talk about them. Like tonight in chapter 5, we're, we'll talk about the healing of the impotent man at the pool of Bethesda. Oh, thank God for mercy. You know, he had 38 years of, of wanting wanting to be touched. And I'm going to analyze, we're going to look at what caused those years uh, and kind of take a close look at that healing. In chapter 9, the amazing account of the opening of the eyes of the man born blind. And then in chapter 11, the greatest of our Lord's miracles, the raising of Lazarus, from the dead. See, all of this increases the hostility against Jesus until it culminates at last in his death. Oh, we rejoice that he that he came. We rejoice at his first coming. But oh, we're anticipating his second coming, aren't we? He's coming again. So we'll take a look at John uh, chapter 5. And we'll be going through some of these uh, verses. Uh, I won't take time. I should take time, but um, maybe I'll just uh, leave the reading until I look at these points as we go down. I'm interested in verse 7. This sick man at the pool of Bethesda had a complaint. And that's what we want to look at, the complaint of this sick man, this impotent man. That pool of Bethesda, we know it to be the house of mercy, is located to the north part of the Temple Mount, near what is now called St. Stephen's Gate, which is the site of the Sheep Gate. And it tells us about those five colonnades or porches around the Pool of Mercy situated by the Sheep Gate. Oh, that's a little sermon right there when you talk about the sheep, you talk about the lamb, you talk about his mercy. You know, I could go on right there and talk a little bit about uh, Jesus Christ and just use these symbols here to portray him. But the sick man at the pool of Bethesda had a complaint. He was asked, don't you want to get well? Don't you want to be healed? And he said, I have no man when the water is troubled to put me in the pool. But while I am coming, another steppeth down before me. Another steppeth down before me. Now, I was uh, reading uh, today, and you know, that verse uh, 4 is left out of a lot of versions. 
you know, about angel coming down and troubling the water. You know, in, the, in southern France, that happens among a lot of the Catholics, the, the healing, the anticipations are going on. I've been to the shrine, uh, not shrine, the shrine of Guadalupe in Mexico. Well, you see a lot of crutches just everywhere where people go with anticipation of faith and are healed. Now, I'm not going to get into the psychological end. I just know that faith can go a long way in extending for people to be healed and touched of God. But this sick man would say it this way in our vernacular. Yes, I want to be healed, but I cannot. I've tried. I've done everything I knew how I want to get into that water. I know how. I want to be healed. But I lack the ability. I've no one to help me. I've given up. I have no hope. Have you heard or voiced that same sentiment? I can't seem to get ahead. Someone else gets the choice, jobs. No one recognizes my ability. In this mobile, success-oriented culture, people manipulate others to get their advantage. Professional, political, industrial, Ecclesiastical leaders depend on contacts to realize their goals. I say pity the person who has no man to help him get where he wants to be. But I raise this question, can other people block the will of God in our lives? Never. God is always there to help us. So I would uh, ask you tonight, are you weak? I would say don't be weak or failing and faltering as a Christian. God's will is that we be conformed to the image of His Son. And every circumstance that confronts us is designed to that end. Thank God for His healing touch. If the Word tells me I can be healed, I want to Trust Him and believe Him and have the ability to rise and take up my pallet. Oh, yes. In order to make no provision for a relapse. I want to be touched of God and don't want to relapse at all. I want to just go out and believe that God is and that God will give to me that healing touch that He promised. You know, some people suffer from paralysis of analysis. <laughs> you know, they try to analyze this and analyze that, and, and they're, they're paralyzed. I say when God heals you and God can touch a jury, God can touch my wife, and thanks, Willie, for giving Mary Sue those scriptures Sunday night when we prayed over those prayer cloths. And that, that beautiful card that, Donna sends and you guys send and others that send cards out. That, that's an encouragement and that's a ministry. And I'm here to say to you that um, these that are seeking for healing and seeking for a touch don't want to relapse. They want to take God at His word and uh, they want to be there and not blame others. We can't blame others. This This world is in a in a blame society. You know, people blame poverty on the rich people that provides jobs. I get so sick of it. Let, let a man and a woman make money. There are thousands upon thousands of Chinese right now buying high-end real estate in California, in Florida, in New York and Chicago, and 
people over there ask why? Because we want to go into America from time to time. I'm telling you, America is still a great nation. It's a great nation, and it's a nation that's founded on this book. All of those Ivy League schools, this was the textbook. All of those Ivy League schools, and we let Horace Mann, we let other Dewey, and we let all of these secular education nuts get in and take the Word of God from us, and we're suffering because a prayer out of the school and this blessed textbook. Thank God for J. Seculo. Thank God for Liberty University. Thank God for the CBN. Thank God for all of the Christian institutions that are fighting for religious freedoms in America, giving people an opportunity for salvation and healing. I'm telling you, we're in a blaming society. I'm telling you, it's getting ridiculous, the blame game. Blaming others for not helping, helping them and accepting. They're not accepting God's offer. and They just want all of these societal um, giveaways. I don't need to get into that. I want to continue with this word here tonight. Do you believe in the miraculous? If you do, say amen. Do you believe Jesus can bring about the change you so desperately need? Amen. Do you wish to stop repeating the same mistakes and going through the same cycles in your relationships? That's what's wrong with people. They, 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 won't, they repeat the same mistakes. Have you ever seen somebody past 65 still trying to grow up? They hadn't grown up. Man, I was grown up at 18 years old. Somebody told me at 21, man, you act like you were 40 something. No, I had what? But I but I had a a good noggin on my shoulders. You know what a noggin is, don't you? Huh? <laughs> oh my goodness. Some people don't feel safer. I'm telling you, I feel safe in the arms of God, don't you? This world around us is kind of falling apart, but let me tell you something. There's resilience in American people. There are, there's resilience in Christians around the world. Like I said, son, I've read the last chapter of the book. I know we're on the winning side. How many of you know there's going to be a heaven? And How many of you know we're going to shun all the appearance of evil? And we are going to make it through because God's going to give us the grace and that grace is sufficient. Hallelujah. We want to blame others instead of dealing with our own issues. You know, some churches, I'm not saying Zellwood is, but some churches are filled with neurotics. Neurotics. Neurosis is set in. Blaming others. Down in spirit. Down in attitude. You know, I ain't got nobody to help me. And I know how to write correctly. I say ain't because I use ain't a lot. I'm telling you. Do you wish to get rid of your anger or would you just as soon keep it? No anger for me. I want to be delivered by the power of God. Amen. A lot of that um, anger and worry causes psychosomatic diseases. Oh, you're on different territory tonight, preacher. I'm talking about in a few minutes how we're going to look at some spiritual rights that you and I have. You and I have those spiritual rights. Jesus asks each of us, in some area of your life, do you want to be healed? 
If you say yes, he'll say then stand up. Pick up your bed and walk. And you do it. You launch out in faith, believing. The highest gifts in the universe do not depend on man's systems of position and success. They come directly from the hand of God. Hallelujah. The freedom that Jesus offers gives insight into unlimited spiritual potential that we have in God. We have it in Him. All heaven is ours if we but rise and claim it. We've got to claim it. Now, we, we've, sometimes we've fought, we find fault with some folks and we say they believe in name it and claim it. Well, don't be, don't be so blaming. I mean, if the Word of God tells you to claim the territory and pull down the strongholds of the enemy. Now, I'm not going to get into what's taught in Broken Head, Arizona, or out in Tulsa, other places. But let me tell you something. The walk of faith, according to the Word of God, and you see it, you stake your claim on it. You believe God, and it can come to pass. Abide in the vine, ask anything you will. I believe God gives a, a rationale. I believe God gives you reasoning. You know, I, I believe you know what is the possible and the impossible and the probable and the improbable. But go and believe God and let the Holy Spirit give you direction. Let Him speak to you. That's what I'm talking about. Regardless of limitations you face, no need to yield to bitterness and frustration. There's no sense in blaming. You see what I'm trying to draw from this one verse? When it comes to true spiritual progress, when it comes to eternal achievement, when it comes to the fulfillment of serving, no one can stop you. No one can stop you. Now, there were people... All on those five porches there at Bethesda. And Jesus picked out one. Is that correct? Yeah. Thirty eight years. Now, I did a little research and I, I'm not going to go back. Yeah, and recall that it was for my own good about 38 years ago. You know, and what, you know, sometimes people can't wait a year. But suppose you waited 38 years for healing. And sometimes we get impatient, but God is still in control. Just like the prophet said, He knows your thoughts before you think them, and He knows the expected end. Praise God forevermore. So let me repeat again. When it comes to true spiritual progress, eternal achievement, and the fulfillment of serving, no one can stop you. So that's the basis of why I say to you, consider your spiritual rights. R-I-G-H-T-S. Here they are. Number one, there's freedom to cry to God. You can cry to God. There's freedom to commune with the Holy Spirit. Number three, there's freedom to communicate the gospel. Four, there's freedom to challenge the powers of God. Darkness and evil. Number five, there's freedom to carry the burdens of humanity. And lastly, there's freedom to cultivate spiritual graces. 
these are some spiritual rights that I'm going to address tonight. And if I don't finish, we'll just pick it up next week. Let's look at freedom to cry to God. You recall the psalmist David. He used his privilege of prayer continually, did he not? When King Saul denied him access to the palace, God did not bar him from heaven's throne room. He could pray, he could cry, so David cried and God heard. Amen. Praise God. Won't go through the story. But when he cried, God heard. What about Hannah? Hannah felt the pressure of an adversary. Mocked for being childish. She resorted to prayer. Eli the priest misconstrued her soul's anguish, but God heard, and thank God Samuel was his answer. God still answers the prayers of his people. Sometimes I, didn't, I don't know how to pray, and many, many times I've just wept and groaned and moaned before the Lord. And the Holy Spirit knew how to decipher those moans and those groans. Can we say praise God for the Holy Spirit? Praise God for the Holy Ghost. God hears when every other avenue seems closed. The door of prayer stands open. Man, we've got a, oh, that is mighty. Prayer is an awesome, awesome privilege and relationship and tool. The door of prayer stands open. Those who enter find that God has opened all the treasure of heaven to those who ask, to those who seek and knock. Whether you're here in the sanctuary or wherever you are viewing this broadcast, thank God He is still on the throne. He hasn't abdicated His throne. He's still the great emancipator. He's the great intercessor. And He'll hear and He'll set you free. So be persistent. Don't blame anybody. Don't develop self-pity. You know, if you have been dealt the wrong hand, as the old guy used to say, you believe God because it's not luck. It's the grace and the mercy of God. The steps of a good and righteous man or woman is ordered of the Lord. Follow in His step. We haven't begun to exhaust the possibilities of prayer. My, what prayer can do. Prayer can do anything God can do when it's offered a right. we got a privilege to pray, and some folks don't pray as much as they should. But still pray, still believe God. The heart that cries out to God will find His provision. Cry out to Him. I know you have. I say each time that I address you or come and speak or teach, that uh, I know you've heard messages like this over and over again, but it's always good to hear the Word of God and to see this from a different angle, to just take that one verse and draw this from it. There's freedom to cry to God. Number two, there's freedom to commune with the Holy Spirit. Freedom to commune with the Holy Spirit. Oh, praise God for that third person of the blessed triune trinity. Not an it. Thank God He's with us. He's with us tonight. He's a comforter. Persecutors through the ages have not been able to extinguish the fire of faith in the hearts of true believers. Were this a fiery furnace, were this a den of lions, whether it's uh, burned at the stake, whether it's crucified, whether it's crucified upside down, 
or that's placed in a, in a pit of uh, burning uh, uh, tar, if it's um, uh, people giving their lives now throughout the Sudan and throughout Africa because you're a Christian or because you're Jewish, I'm here to tell you those folks stand just like you addressed several months ago, old Polycarp of old. Eighty and six years have I served him, and I won't deny him now. Praise be to God. Give the Lord a praise offering. Hallelujah. We're going to serve him. We have freedom. We have freedom. Somebody said, well, they're going to take Christmas out of Rhode Island. Uh-uh. Out there in Memphis, they're trying some stuff. No. They can do all they want to. They said, oh, we're going to do this and that about gun control. How are they going to handle 989 million guns in America? Old devil, he's out to. Not a one of those guns committed a crime. Hey, folks, lift your head. Our redemption draweth nigh. Jesus is coming. You hear a lot of politics. You hear a lot of bad things about America. Thank God we have people that have a right to go and hunt and fish and enjoy skiing and enjoy swimming, enjoy golfing to those who love the God, you know, to those who just enjoy the mall. I haven't checked up on my wife, them checkbooks, but I'm about to do that pretty quick before Christmas. <laughs> Yo, it seems to me her, her pastime now is, honey, can you take me just for a little while up to the mall? And we went up there yesterday, and she had to get a, a big old piece of uh, pizza from that uh, Sabaros or whatever it is up there in the mall and I had to get me a Chick-fil-A you know and I, I looked and asked her did she have a, a a dollar and I looked in there and I saw that that green back in that pocketbook I'm going to have to I'm going to have to do some checking but oh it's happy it's happy time around my place you know why just like you because we're in love with each other and in love with God. And God knows us. And we have freedom to commune with Him. And He puts His blessings upon us. Can you say amen? So people can give all the persecution they want to to try to extinguish the fire of faith in the hearts of true believers in America. They've come to the wrong place. Ah, oh, they may use this and that to get into office, but Americans are still Americans. And those folks in Egypt has told that Morsi, uh-uh, we didn't put you in to do this. And still we have people in our country didn't even say one blessed thing about it in high places. But I'm going to tell you something. When you give people a little freedom and you try to snatch it away, they're going to rise up. They're going to rise up. And when the devil tries to take away our liberties and freedoms, Christians are going to stand and churches are going to stand. And you're talking about God blessing TBN and God blessing these other networks. And I pray for, for uh, Bowers down here. I pray for uh, the other station. 55 and 45 and pray that God would raise up more people. Sometimes I look and see why that little old preacher from Haiti and he's got jump ministry and he's always a jumping. Uh, let him jump! <laughs> let him jump! He's happy he's doing something. They had a truckloads going up to to New York just the other day, helping those folks that Sandy upset the living standards. Hey, I'm encouraged. Revival's on the way. 
I'm encouraged people from this neighborhood is going to be coming into our church and our pastor and his wife are going to be blessed. You know why? Because God is still in control. Somebody give the Lord a praise offering. God is still in control. We have this blessed privilege. We have freedom to cry to God. We have freedom to commune with the Holy Spirit. The soul that is tuned to God and filled with worship sends up a continual hallelujah and lie and lives in an atmosphere of spiritual song. The devil can't take away my song. And I'm not going to hang my harp on a willow tree. Praise God. I've heard the sound in the mulberry tree. Woo! Now, I believe I could kick my leg up right now. I feel the presence of the Lord. So, well, why don't you? I ain't going to try it right now. <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. Hey, it's good to be happy. All the spite and indignation the world may heap on a Christian cannot confiscate the song of joy. Oh, hallelujah. I got to joy. You sing that little song. Got to joy, 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 joy down in my heart. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, down in, mm -hmm. <laughs> I still can sing that song. And it's joy unspeakable and full of great glory. Hallelujah. Blessed be his name. Devil's a lie. He can't confiscate your song of joy. Men may hate the child of God, but they cannot stop him from loving God with all his heart, soul, mind, and body. And strength. This is why Paul and Silas could sing at midnight in the dungeon. Fetters and bleeding bodies could not silence them. Praise God. Hallelujah. Stone walls and iron bars could not separate them from the living presence of God. Remember what I spoke on Sunday night? The present of His presence. He is the present of your present. Thank God for Emmanuel. God is with us. Hallelujah. Blessed be His holy and His mighty name. Hallelujah. I'm going to take one more point and then I'll finish him out next, next week. The Lord willing. And the creek don't rise. And we don't get snowbound. I pastored Champaign, Illinois. That was, a, that was a wonderful church. And they told me, he said, now Wesley, Jack Dean was overseer, and I worked with him in Carolina many years ago. He was overseer. He said, I want you to come to Illinois. And I was down here in Bradenton. And he said, come to Southern Illinois. I said, I'm going to try to get you uh, up in the Chicago area, and we need to get that back into Illinois, and we need an evangelism director. He said, come to Carmel, Illinois. Carmel, Illinois was a, a coal mining town and all field, but a nice little, nice little church. And then the Lord uh, sent me up to, up to Champaign. And when I got there, they told me, he said, now, you know, those blizzards uh, come from out of Iowa, Nebraska. said, uh, they tell me when you came into Carmi, you came in a leisure suit and said you were packed down with uh, Indian River grapefruit and uh, Indian River uh, uh, oranges, and, and you had all kind of things representative of, of Florida. I said, yeah, Lord bless us. He said, but just wait. To the winter comes. Let me tell you something. About seven weeks during those blizzards and all, we didn't even have church. Thank God they sent their mail. They sent their tithe in. Praise God. Gave me a little rest, you know. <laughs> I had built a Cape Cod uh, parsonage there, so I made sure they had a uh, nice fireplace, so I just 
had the wood in the garage, and we just enjoyed seven weeks. No church. Oh, but we still had the church in the lives of the people, and they were still faithful to God. And I'm so glad that I went through those uh, times to appreciate the sunshine in Florida. Amen. But wherever you are, wherever you go, you have the freedom to commune with the Holy Spirit. And so it's, it's marvelous to know that um, we have the freedom of His Spirit to operate in these last and closing days. Wherever I've gone, I know the pastor can say the same thing. God has been with us, and we've learned to cry to Him. We've had the freedom to cry to Him, had the freedom to praise His name. And we've had the freedom to commune with the Holy Ghost. It's been worth it. It continues to be worth it. Jesus asked each of us, and I'll repeat again, in some area of your life, do you want to be healed? If you say yes, he'll say, stand up, take up your bed and walk. Now that was something... For Jesus to come in on a Sabbath, don't know what feast that was. Some said, well, it might have been Passover. Well, it might have been Feast of Pentecost, whatever. It was an annual feast. And I think there were three major annual feasts for, for that type of crowd. But irregardless of what transpired, hostility set in. After that, verse 17, the hostility against Jesus. You know, Jesus will come back so that you won't relapse and say, Are you still here? Are you still trusting in me? And he'll let you know that he touched you. And then you'll broadcast to the world. You'll broadcast to those hostile people like this guy who was impotent for 38 years. But we can't be shy. We've got to believe God. Take him at his word, and he's going to see us through. Amen. Now, this is one of the important hours that you'll spend. We enjoy the Sunday services, but Wednesday night, is an important hour. And when the word goes forth and when the prayers are offered and when the teacher, the preacher, uh, teaches as if there were 300 people, I'm telling you, God will bless and God will touch us all for our faithfulness. Oh, I have a spiritual right. And this book has promised me we'll continue these... Um, different spiritual rites next week. Now our young, aggressive pastor is coming to close. Huh? Okay. Did you think he heard my description of him? <laughs> Praise the Lord. Hey.